Hello, we are Memphis Chem University. Today we are talking about a pretty tricky trig topic and that is inverse trig functions. Before we get through some examples, we should probably go over trig functions, inverse trig functions in general. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So inverse trig. Basically what we're gonna do is we are gonna be working backwards to what we've been doing in the past, previous videos. Um, so instead of finding sine, cosine, tangent of angles and getting numbers, we're going to start off with numbers and we're going to try to think backwards. We're going to try to think about what angles give us those particular sine, cosine, and inverse func uh, tangent functions instead of finding sine, cosine, tangent of angles like pi over 4. So our answers are going to be like pi over 4, pi over 6, negative pi over 3, things like that instead of plugging in those angles. So an inverse trig function, just like with other inverse functions, is what you expect. If y is equal, to, or if sine of y is equal to x, that means that y is equal to arc sine x. So this is the inverse function. Um, we call this inverse sine or arc sine. We're going to use this interchangeably. Keep in mind that we're going to note, denote it uh, two different ways, either as arc sine, arc tangent, arc cosecant, arc cosine, things like that. Or we're going to denote it with this uh, power to the negative 1, sine to the negative 1x. Keep in mind that this is not the same thing as sine of x to the negative 1 because we actually have a thing for that. That's just 1 over sine, so that's just cosecant. This is called inverse sine, which is kind of confusing because when we write squared here, we do uh, mean sine of x squared. So when we, when we write negative 1, we mean inverse sine or arc sine. So the problem with inverse sine and arc sine, it's not the really the backwards thinking. That's not too bad. It's um, sort of uh, a nuance with inverse functions in order to make them function. So first off, I'm going to talk about a function that's a little bit more familiar. Um, y is equal to x squared. So y equals x squared is certainly a function, but when you have its inverse, um, you just sort of rotate it 90 degrees. And of course, the inverse is square root of x. For example, if you have um, 7 and you do 7 squared, that's 49. And then if you take the square root of 49, that is going to be 7. So that's what inverses are. But unfortunately, if you just rotate x squared, if you just take the entire um, domain of x squared and try to form a new function, you're not going to be able to form a function because multiple um, elements have the same squared, which means that if you just have square root of x just like this, you would ha you would be mapping it to do two different elements, certain elements. So for example, if you take that 49 number, well, should we have 49 as the square root of 49, should we define it as 7 or should we define it as neg negative 7? And what we do is we just take the natural number because you can't, in order to have a function, you can't have different numbers be mapped to two different elements. That doesn't pass the vertical line test. So what we did is we just naturally defined, well, we're going to define square root of 49 as 7. We could have defined square root of 49 as negative 7, but it's just not as natural. Um, so that's how we define it. And the same thing with tr uh, trig functions. So here's my function of sine. So sine is uh, just a regular function, but unfortunately it's periodic, which means that it keeps repeating over and over and over again. So when we draw inverse sine, uh, we're going to draw it like this. So again, we just rotate it just like we rotated x squared. We have to decide on this inverse sine graph, which should be our branch, our principal branch is what they call it. Just like with x squared, in order to make our inverse sine a function, we need to fix the domain of um, of sine, which fixes the dom range of uh, inverse sine. So this is kind of confusing. So again, when we have x squared, we we have this entire function here, but we fixed and we sort of limited the, the number of x's that we can plug in. We only limited it to this part right here. Um, same thing with sine and inverse sine. We're going to limit it to a certain part and we're going to limit it to this branch right here. So this is just the natural thing. So what this means is that all of our inverse sine Num uh, answers are going to be within the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and the picture right here is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and keep in mind why are we choosing this part right here well it, it has every single potential sine value so if you drew this part well you're not going to hit every sine value because some of the coordinates are the same some of the y coordinates are the same so just like with square root of x it has to give you a positive x even though that there's some numbers negative x's that give you the same answer for um when we're doing sine of x and inverse sine of x, our answer has to be within the answer negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So for example, uh, the number negative pi over 4 on the unit circle has several names. There's um, certain angles that are not negative pi over 2 that share the same terminal angles or are coterminal. So they look like uh, negative pi over 4, for example, 7 pi over 4. So we have to write the answer, though, as negative pi over 4. And that's just really the key. So... Uh, 
here are my three main inverse trig functions. Our answers between arc sine of x will have to be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 because of the principal branch we choose. For arc cosine of x, it's going to be a little bit different. It has to be between 0 and pi. And then for arc tan of x, it's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So that's really the key fact. We are going to be working backwards, like I said at the beginning of the video. But unfortunately, there's an infinite number of angles that give you sine. Sine of that angle gives you, for example, one half. So what we need to do is we need to choose a particular one, a particular angle, and that angle is going to fit within these intervals. And we're just going to be practicing these interval, uh, intervals a lot. Um, same thing with, again, x squared. In x squared, you need your answer to be positive. So for these arc signs or sine to the negative one, inverse sine, we need our answers to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and same thing with the other ones. Uh, they have specific angles, uh, specific intervals, and that's because they are the most natural um sort of branches of the function to choose in order to form an inverse function. And we want our inverse function to be indeed a function so that we pass the vertical line test. So all of this is quite confusing, uh, but hopefully you'll see that the questions are actually aren't too bad. So we're going to start off with these questions. And as we go through the questions, it should be more manageable. So in this case, we're doing arc sine of square root of uh, 3 over 2. So again, instead of finding sine of an angle, we're thinking about whose angle is whose sine whose angle um, if you take the sine of that angle, we'll give you root 3 over 2. So what I'd like to do still, even if we're working backwards, I like to still draw a triangle. And basically, instead of drawing an angle and finding the sides of the triangle, I'm going to write draw the sides of the triangle and try to determine what angle I drew. So in this case, because we're dealing with sine, uh, keep in mind that my answer has to be within these two quadrants. Uh, these will be my positive signs. These will be my negative um, signs. So here I'm doing it with a positive sign, root 3 over 2. So I'm going to just draw this triangle. Sine is the y-coordinate, so it's going to be root 3 over 2. This is 1 half. This is 1. So again, I'm using the sides of the triangle to determine what angle I drew. What angle is this? Well, it's going to be a pi over 3 or a pi over 6. And keep in mind, in this case, it's going to be a pi over 3 because um, the middle side is opposite the middle angle. So in this case, the answer is pi over 3. So uh, what is the saying? The sine of pi over 3 is equal to root 3 over 2. So the arc sine of root 3 over 2 is pi over 3. And again... Uh, normally, we would draw an angle, determine sides, find use Sokotoa to find sines, cosines, and tangents. And in this case, we're using sines, cosines, and tangents to find those sides first, and then we draw in the angle. Uh, so the process is not too bad. It's just we're working backwards, really. So this is where it gets a little bit trickier because we're dealing with a negative. So same thing here, but we just have to remember what quadrants do these functions lie, just like how we remember that the square root of x only can give you positive numbers. For arc sine, it only can give you angles in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what we're going to do is we know that it's going to be in this quadrant right here. Sines of this and quadrant 3 are also negative, but again, we're focused on these two quadrants only um, in these questions. So let's just draw the triangle. It's going to be negative 1 half because it's the y coordinate again, root 3 over 2, and we have here um, 1. So now we just have to determine what angle we drew. But again, the main focus is that the angle has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 in order for arc sine to be a well-defined function. So, for example, um, this is definitely a pi over 6 because, um, again, it's opposite the smaller side. But we have to determine what kind of pi over 6 is it. One of the answers is 11 pi over 6 because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is an 11 pi over 6, but 11 pi over 6 is not the correct answer, even though it is the a coterminal angle to the correct an answer, um, it does look like the same angle, we have to have our answers in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the correct answer here is what kind of pi over 6 do we want? We actually want our answer to be negative pi over 6, because that is the only angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 that looks like this. So it's well defined. So again, drawing these angles, but being careful about where our answers actually can lie, uh, just as a review, arc sine is in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So if you don't get an answer in between these two numbers, you, your answer is wrong. Um, same thing with arc cosine x. It has to be between 0 and pi. And then arc tan is like arc sine. Um, keep in mind that because we're eliminating our functions, uh, there's going to be some answers that we're not going to be able to do. So for example, inverse sine of 2. The domain of these functions are not all real numbers. There are some numbers we cannot plug in. Um, this is actually does not exist because sine of any number is in between negative 1 and 1, uh, negative 1 and 1. So the 
um, the domain of these functions are between um, negative 1 and 1. We can't plug in anything not in between negative 1 and 1 because there's no sign that gives you 2. Um, there's no un there's no angle on the unit circle whose y coordinate is 2 because you're on the unit circle. So just keep in mind that does not exist will be a valid answer. So now we come to our first inverse cosine. So again, the key is just knowing which quadrants to draw. Perhaps in the future, I'm not going to draw the entire uh, coordinate axis. I'm going to just draw the angles that the quadrants that are important in that question. So inverse cosine has to live between 0 and pi. So I'm only going to draw 0 to pi. So here's 0 to pi. And then it's negative. So these will be my negative cosines. There will be, these will be my positive cosines. And notice that from these two angles, uh, from these two quadrants, sorry, we'll be able to achieve every single cosine value that's possible. So that's why we only need these two. It's going to be negative, so it's going to look like this. Negative root 2 over 2, so that's this side, because it's the x side. That makes this side root 2 over 2, because we're doing uh, 45, 45, 90. So again, even if we're doing uh, things backwards, you still want to know the unit circle very well. What angle did we draw here? Well, this is a pi over 4, because we're dealing with a 45, 45, 90. And how many pi over 4s is it? It's 3, because it's 1, 2, 3. So this is 3 pi over 4 is this answer. So again, just drawing these triangles, um, just focusing on what angles the quadrants are in, and then um, sort of seeing what angles we drew. And being good with the inner circle is very helpful. So for example, inverse tan of 0, well, we're dealing with um, things that are in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 by definition. So we want something that looks like this. Keep in mind, of course, that not all of our angles are going to be what I call triangle angles or angles within quadrants. They could be coordinate axis angles, so it's nice to, again, think backwards. Um, inverse tan or tangent is the y coordinate over the x coordinate sine over cosine. So you want the y coordinate to be 0. Keep in mind that over here at pi, the y coordinate is 0, but again, we're only fixed between these two um, quadrants. So in this case, we just want the point 0 or the angle 0 because 1 comma 0. Keep in mind, if you do the tangent of this, it'll be 0 over 1, which is 0, so the answer is 0 here. Same thing for this one, our cosine of negative 1. Well, in this case, cosine is only on these two quadrants, so we're only going to draw these two quadrants. And we want to just think backwards. Whose cosine is negative 1? Well, it's this point right here because we want an x-coordinate of negative 1 comma 0. So what angle did I draw? Well, that's the angle pi. And again, it's very helpful to be good at the unit circle because in this case, arc tan of negative 1. First thing to do is to determine what quadrants the answer could possibly be in, and it is under this guideline. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to see arc tan of negative 1. That's going to be this. Uh, these two quadrants, because we're dealing with arc tan, our answer has to be, be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So arc tan of negative 1, just be careful. That is not a coordinate axis, even if it might look like that because of uh, the previous one. Um, arc tan of negative 1, it's nice to know that when you do tangent of 45, 45, 90 degrees, um, because the legs are the same, the tangent will be either 1 or negative 1. So in this case, we're drawing this because it's negative 1. So it's in this quadrant, the fourth quadrant. If it was positive, it would have been in the first quadrant. Then we are drawing this angle, triangle. Again, I just know the triangle very well. So um, it's negative root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and 1. And this is a pi over 4. Tangent of pi over 4s are 1 and negative 1s. Uh, and then what kind of pi over 4 do we have? You can call this angle 7 pi over 4, but just remember that our answers have to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we have to determine the name of the angle or the coterminal angle of that se uh, 7 pi over 4 that is within this interval, and that's going to be negative pi over 4. So that's our answer there. So just draw your triangle or your coordinate axes, know what quadrant you're in, and just be careful that your interval, that your answer is within the allowed interval because we're defining these functions, inverse functions, as actual functions, so there can't be multiple answers, and we define it as the most natural thing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to practice some composition of functions. So what this would be is you would um, start off with a number. You think about whose angle, um, whose, whose angle gives, the sign of that angle gives you x. Sorry, so you start off with a number. You want to couple with an angle whose sine of that angle is that x. And then what you do is you take that angle once you find it and you plug it into ta uh, tangent. So you find the tangent of that angle. So for these with x, what I like to do is I like to just draw pictures. So um, because we're doing it with x, we, we can sort of draw always our pictures in first quadrant because we don't know if it's positive or negative. So it's just a representative picture. So I'm just going to draw it in this uh, just right here. So I'm just dealing it like here. 
And keep in mind that, again, arc sine of x is an angle. Um, you're starting with a number and you're coming up with an angle. So we can call this arc sine of x right here. And then the arc sine of x, well, what it is is it will allow us to draw the triangle. So um, the definition of arc sine of x is that it represents an the answer is an angle whose sine is x. So I'm going to use Sagatoa here. If the sine of this angle is x, that means that the opposite over the hypotenuse of that angle is equal to x. So I'm going to write x over 1. So keep in mind that for this angle, which is arc sine of x, the sine of it is x over 1. So we're good to go. Um, so what we need to do, though, is we want to find the tangent. So we have, we use this information, arc sine of x, to draw this picture right here. Um, in order to find the tangent, we do need opposite over adjacent. So we do need this third side. And in order to find that third side, what we're going to do is we're going to do the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll do that on the side here. Um, x squared plus this third side, we can call it y squared, equals 1 squared. So it looks like it'll be 1 minus x squared is equal to y squared. So then y is equal to this bottom side is 1 minus x squared and the square root of that. So that's that. And now we're going to be able to find tangent. So tangent is just the opposite over the adjacent. So it's just x over square root of 1 minus x squared. So again, hopefully you see what I did there. I started off with a triangle using the given fact that the sine of the angle I want is x. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm only involved in these sides and opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, just a little trick. x is, of course, x over 1. So we can write it as a fraction, x over 1. And then um, I was done with the arc sine part, and now I'm just finding the tangent of this triangle. But in order to find tangent, you do need that adjacent side, and we use the Pythagorean to find that adjacent side. So let's do a very similar question with this. So again, we're just drawing a triangle. Sine to inverse sine um, is right here of 5x. What this means is that the sine of this angle is 5x. I'm going to write that again as a trick as 5x over 1. So I can do opposite of hypotenuse. So the opposite is 5x. The hypotenuse is 1. So the sine of this angle is opposite of hypotenuse, 5x over 1, which is what we want. So now what we want to do is we want to find the cosine of this angle. But in order to find the cosine of the angle, we need the adjacent side. And the adjacent side will be used using the Pythagorean theorem again. So we'll do um, 5x squared plus y squared, same thing as the previous one, equals 1. Um, but keep in mind, or 1 squared, but keep in mind in this case that 5x is um, the entire opposite side. So when we square it, just be careful that the 5 also should be squared. So what we're going to get is, sorry, my pen, pen is uh, being a little bit weird here. I think I just need to push it down. So we're going to get... Um, y is equal to square root of 1 minus not 5x squared, but 25x squared. Because when you're squaring this 5x, 5x squared is 25x squared, because again, you need to square that 5. But once we find this third side, it should be uh, pretty easy to finish the question, because all we're doing is we're finding the cosine of this triangle right here. To find the cosine of this triangle, it will be adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's just going to be square root of 1 minus 25x squared. So that's the answer here. So hopefully you sort of by this time have an experience or gain experience with inverse uh, trig. We're really, again, only dealing with backwards thinking to the thing was uh, or the processes that we're sort of used to from previous videos. We just have to focus on what sort of answers are actually allowed, which quadrants are our angles allowed to be in, what intervals are they in, going to be in. So to finish it off or for this latter half of this video, as we do this, uh, the rest of these questions, uh, we have several, but we're just going to be doing the same idea sort of thing. Uh, we're going to deal with composite of functions, and we're going to just slowly find these numbers. And again, the thing we're going to be careful of is the legal answers we're going to find. So let's just get started. So again, uh, all these compositions are either an, a cosine and then an arc, a regular trig function and then an inverse, or an inverse and then a trig. Just, just keep in mind, uh, in this case, you, we start off with an angle, we find its cosine, and then we find the inverse of that to, fi to finally find an angle. And then these, you're start you're first going for an angle, and then you're finding the cosine, sine, or tangent of that angle, as we'll see. So it is a little bit different if the inverse is on the outside or the inside, but we can still do the questions. So first thing I do is I, I just cover up the outside function and just do the inside function. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to first find cosine of pi over 6. 
So pi over 6 is in this quadrant right here. So pi over 6 is this. Well, when we have pi over 6 here, um, what are the sides? Well, it's 1 half because it's opposite the smallest angle. Root 3 over 2. We can zoom in here. Why not? I'm sorry about that. My phone sort of slipped there. Uh, but we can zoom in here. So right here. So uh, 1 half root 3 over 2. Uh, we drew this triangle. So now we can do the cosine, of course. So the cosine is the um, adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we are left with arc cosine of root 3 over 2. So now what we uh, sort of we, what we've done is we've changed the question to be as easy as the previous uh, the back the front page of the question. We're just finding arc cosines of various things. So I'm going to treat this as if I didn't know that the original question was there, and I'm just going to take this as a separate question. So arc cosine. Um, what I want to focus on is what quadrants I'm allowed to be in. So that's going to be these two quadrants because I'm dealing with something positive. It's going to be right here. What kind of what? How I'm going to draw the sides? Well, cosine goes with the x coordinate, so it's x coordinate is going to be this unit circle, and then one half. Of course, we draw the same exact picture. So, what angle do we have here? We have pi over six. This is our final answer because what angle did we draw pi over six? So we're starting off with the thing we 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 ended up with the thing we started off, but unfortunately, it's not always going to be this easy because of the way that the functions are defined. It only works if the angles are in certain quadrants. It would be nice, for example, if every time you squared something and you took the square root of something, uh, right afterwards, you would get the same thing back. So, for example, 5 squared was 25. You take the square root back, you would get 5. It would be nice if it worked every single way like this. Then all of these questions would be easy. But unfortunately, that isn't always the case because if you take negative 5, if you squared that, you get 25. If you take the square root back, you'll get 5, which is not the same thing as what you started off with. So it's not going to always be this easy cosine of this angle giving and then our cosine will immediately give you the same thing back as we'll see. So let's just keep, uh, keep going with these questions. So again, what I like to do is I like to start off with the inside function first. Here the inverse trig is in the inside, but that's nothing too bad. So all we're going to do is we are going to draw these uh, quadrants because that's where um, signs are positive or sorry, that's where inverse signs are allowed to be defined between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Because it's positive, we're actually only going to be dealing with the first quadrant. So it's going to be the first quadrant here. So here we go. So um, 1 half is going to be the y side because that's we're dealing with sine, root 3 over 2. And then 1 here. So then what we're going to do is we are going to find um, what angle did we draw here. Well, it looks like we drew a pi over 6. So we need to find cotangent of pi over 6. I think when the inverse function is e uh, inside, it's an easier question. Uh, but notice that we are drawing cosine of pi over 6. Keep in mind that when we go to this step right here, it might not be the same picture. Uh, so just be careful. But in this case, pi over 6 the picture is obviously this guy right here. So we can quickly redraw it. Um, it's going to be 1 half root 3 over 2 and 1. So what's the cotan of this angle? Well, now we're just dealing with unit circle stuff. Cotan is the y uh, x coordinate over the y coordinate adjacent over hypotenuse so it's going to be root three over two over one half those halves will cancel so we're going to end up with root three in this case and it makes sense that we end up with a number not an angle because our last function is a regular trig function while the previous one our outside function was an inverse function so that's why we ended up with an angle so let's just keep going so here we have cosine of zero and in the inside here so first off what we want to do is we want to just find what the cosine of zero is so that's just going to be um, this guy right here, 1 comma 0. So invert, uh, cosine of 0 is just 1. Um, it's the x-coordinate. So now we just do the outer function, cotangent of negative 1 of 1. It is nice to know that tangents and cotangents, when you have 1s and negative 1s, you're dealing with pi over 4s. Keep in mind that inverse cotangent, like cotangents picture, is strictly within this interval. So we it's natural to draw this. Um, just these two guys, the answer cannot possibly be in the second and third quadrant. Then we are dealing with um, positive stuff, so we're going to draw it in this quadrant. So right here, and then it's going to be root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and 1. What sort of um, angle did we draw here? Well, the angle we drew is just 1. Not 1, sorry, pi over 4. I'm not thinking right now, but it's inverse of cotan is 1, so we, we have pi over 4. This is what we drew. Nice to know that unit circle. So... Next question, 
Again, I think it's easier when their inverse trig is on the inside here. Um, here we don't are not dealing with actually a special triangle here, but you'll see that it's not too bad. So inverse cosine again only can live in these two quadrants. We have three fifths here, so we're going to be focused on the X, uh, first quadrant. If it was negative three fifths, we would draw something in the uh, second uh, second quadrant. So three fifths, I'm going to draw it here. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so it's going to be three over five. And then this is my angle that I care about. We can call this theta. So all, all, all I need to do is find sine of theta. To find sine of theta, I just need to do Sokotoa. I need this for, uh, third side, but what is this third side? It's a special triangle. It's three, four, five. This is going to be four. So what's going to be the sign here? Four over five. So perhaps I misspoke. Um, anytime the inverse is on the inside, it seems like you can only, you only have to draw one picture. Um, but if the inverse is on the outside, you do have to draw that second picture because things might get a little wacky, as we'll see. So here, um, inverse is on the outside, so it might be a little bit hard. I would wish that this question was exactly like the first one, where if you take the inverse cosine of a cosine, you'll get pi over six, the same thing you started off with. It would be nice if we did inverse sine and sine, and we would just start off end up with pi, five pi over three. But you'll see that that's not the actual answer. So let's see what I. So first off, um, we're just going to cover up the outside thing. Find sine of pi, five pi over three. That's not too bad. Um, pi over three, one pi over three, two pi over three, three pi over three, four five. So it's in this quadrant right here. Um, so just label the sides. It's going to be negative um, root three over two because it's a negative, and also it's opposite the pi over 3 angle. This is 1 half, this is 1. So what's the sign here? It's the y over the um, unit circle, which is just the y coordinate. It's negative root 3 over 2. So we want to find arc sine of negative root 3 over 2. It would be great if it was 5 pi over 3, but 5 pi over 3, unfortunately, is not within the allowed interval, so that cannot possibly be the answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the same picture. Um, it's the same picture because we're using the same function, but I'm going to redraw it anyway. I'm going to focus that it has to be within these two quadrants, though. Um, so negative means that it's a negative, just like in this one. So it's negative root 3 over 2, 1 half, and 1. So what angle did we draw? It's the same picture, so it seems like we, start, we drew the same angle that we started off with. But again, our answer has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what's the name of this angle, or what's the coterminal angle of 5 pi over 3 that fits within this interval, that's negative pi over 3. Uh, because 5 pi over 3 is you go around and you end up right here, and negative pi over 3 is you just go uh, clockwise and end up in the same spot. So this one's negative pi over 3. So again, this is the tricky part of these questions, but hopefully you can sort of see the pattern here. Just know what quadrants the inverse functions can be in. So now what we're dealing with is we're dealing with cosecant of arctan of negative 1. Um, so first off, what we need to do is we want to find the arctan of negative 1. Um, inverse is in the inside here, so it's a little bit easier. Arctan of negative 1, um, probably should have only drawn these two quadrants right here. Um, but sorry, I drew both of them. Keep in mind that it has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So arctan of negative 1, because it's negative, it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Can't be in the third quadrant because arctan is only defined from here to here. Then I'm going to label my sides. Again, it's nice to know the unit circle to know that r of negative 1 deals with the pi over 4. You don't actually have to know what angle this is, but r of negative 1 is negative pi over 4 because the answer has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And so what we need to do is we want to find cosine, cosecant of negative pi over 4. Again, because the inverse is on the inside, I did misspoke earlier, you can just stick with this one picture. So sticking with this one picture, what is the, going to be the answer? Well, it looks like it's going to be cosecant will be the um, hypotenuse over the um, opposite. So it's going to be 1 over negative root 2 over 2, which is the same thing as negative root 2 once you simplify it. Because it's 2 over root 2 and 2 over root 2 is root 2. So let's just keep going. This one looks like a little bit harder because the inverse is on the outside. So first off, we do want to find cosecant of pi over 3. Um, so let's do that here. So cosecant of pi over 3, well, that's just a normal unit circle stuff. Pi over 3 is this guy right here. Pi over 3. This side is root 3 over uh, 2. Um, this side is 1 half. This side is 1. So it looks like the cosecant will be 1 over this guy right here, 1 over root 3 over 2. So that's 2 over root 3. 
and now we're trying to find the inverse cosine of 2 over root 3. But one of the main things is that, remember that these questions can be pretty tricky. You cannot find the inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent of every single number you want. Um, 2 over root 3 is not less th is less than 1, or sorry, greater than 1. 2 is bigger than root 3. Um, our normal root 3 over 2 value, that fits in, in between negative 1 and 1. Uh, but 2 is root 4, so root 4 is bigger than root 3. So this one actually is, does not exist. There are no angles that have cosine 2 over root 3 because 2 over root 3 is bigger than 1. So there's no possible way that your angle on the unit circle has x coordinate bigger than 1 because you're on the unit circle. So just be wary of that. Your answers could be does not exist. So now we're dealing with this question right here. The inverse is on the inside, so it shouldn't be too bad. So um, we're dealing with cosecant, inverse cosecant. It works the same as sine because sine is the opposite of or the reciprocal of um, cosecant. So in this case, we're only dealing with these two quadrants. So it's these two quadrants right here. And this allows me to draw um, which angles that it should go to, what quadrant it should go to. It should be in this fourth quadrant here because we're dealing with a negative. So it should be negative here. And then um, when we have this negative, we, uh, we're we thinking about cosecant. Cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. So it's the hypotenuse 13 over negative 12. So all we're going to do is we're going to find the secant. To find the secant, all we have to do is we have to find this third side here. The third side is going to be used the Pythagorean theorem. We are dealing with a special triangle, 5, 12, 13. So this is 5 here. So now we're doing secant. Secant is going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So it's just 13 over 5. So again, when the um, inverse trig is on the inside, it's usually an easier question because you don't have to draw multiple pictures. So now we are going to have two more. So let's just find this guy right here. So it's inverse cosine of sine of 11 pi over 6. So to find sine of 11 pi over 6, we're going to first do that, of course. And then we're going to find the inverse cosine. So sine of pi over 6, this is sine of 11 pi over 6. This is unit circle stuff. So 11 pi over 6 is going to be right here because it's uh, 12 pi over 6. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's right here. Um, so this is the angle I want. Um, it is a pi over 6, so I need to determine the, uh, the sides of the triangle, of course. So if this is pi over 6, that means that this is negative 1 half. Keep in mind that we're in the fourth quadrant, so our y's are negative. This is root 3 over 2. And then this is 1. So now what we need to do is we need to determine um, what is the sine. The sine is going to be the y coordinate, so we're dealing with cosine of negative 1 to the uh, 1, negative 1 half. Inverse cosine of negative 1 half. So it's going to be inverse cosine of negative one half. Then what we need to do is we need to um, find inverse of cosine of negative one half. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a separate picture. Keep in mind that inverse of cosine is this picture right here. So we know that we're going to be in one of these two quadrants. So it's going to be in one of these two quadrants. Uh, because we're doing negatives, or we're dealing with this guy right here. When we're doing negatives right here, so it's going to be negative one half. I need to find these guys negative one half. Is going to be this guy right here because we are dealing with the x coordinate and we are in this quadrant because it is negative. This will be root 3 over 2. And this will be 1. And then what we needed, this is going to be a pi over 3. So um, we just have to determine, we need an answer between 0 and pi. So what is the best name for this angle? It's going to be 2 pi over 3 because it's pi over 3 and then 2 pi over 3. So this is 2 pi over 3. So now we have one last question to go. And it's actually a trick question. So it's actually a pretty uh, quick question. How do you find the inverse sine of 2? Well, you can't find that actually because there's no um, angles whose sine is 2 because there's no angles on the unit circle whose y coordinates are 2. So the answer just does not exist here. We don't even need to find the cosine of this angle because you can't find the cosine of an angle that doesn't exist. So hopefully you sort of see the values of trig functions. Again, it's pretty tricky, even if we're just thinking backwards, even if we're just drawing these same other pictures, except the only thing is that you need to focus on what the inverse values actually can be. Again, inverse sine and inverse tan are within these two intervals. It has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, um, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. The only thing that is that our cosine has to also be in 0 and pi. And if you know those facts, you should be pretty good with inverse trig, even if you're doing compositional functions. But thanks again for joining me, and I hope to see you uh, next time.